Hey, it's our second. In this video, I'll be covering the tier list I'll be using in Season 8. We split up our tier list into solo queue and competitive. Challenger solo queue and competitive play is actually fairly comparable, although there are some um, big distinctions. In competitive, vision is a lot more uh, prevalent. Their junglers will almost opt for a green smite, while in solo queue it's mostly red smite. And also the drafting champion select is a lot more important and the matchups are more defined. For example, something like Vladimir is fairly strong in solo queue, but in competitive play, you'll almost always receive the Malzar matchup against it. Um, either it'll be blind picked first, the Malzar, or if they pick Vladimir first, it'll be countered with that Malzar pick. So the matchups are even more defined, there's more vision. Excuse me, there's a the coordination. There's also how assistance works. Some picks are a little easier to pull off and other picks will get punished more in competitive play, even more so than in solo queue. So we split the tier list right now. It seems like a lot of the top lane picks I think are fairly strong. Um, for top lane, Grassland Dying and Aftershock are good. I think a lot of the tanks are doing well, like Shen. And then safer picks are also more uh, valuable in competitive play. So something like Shen, or in Maokai. Klepto users are also doing really well right now, both in solo queue, and I think this will also be good in competitive, like Ezreal and Gangplank. Gangplank might also join this list. This one we're still not too sure on, I haven't seen in competitive play, but these are my assumptions, these are my guesses for right now. As far as solo queue, and uh, something that's good in both solo queue and competitive play, I think, are the domination junglers right now. Getting zombie wards, I think, is really good on junglers, having that early spike. All the junglers can generally take advantage of sudden impact. So stuff like Elise, I think, is going to be fairly good again. Stuff that's also doing really well in the jungle right now that I don't think is as valuable in competitive play are the press attack junglers. Like Xin Zhao, uh, Shivana are doing well, and Kindred. Kindred falls um, better into that competitive category and might be played. So I'll keep an eye out for him. Um, as far as Shivana goes, I think she's doing a lot better, but still not at that. I still think something like uh, Elise is can outperform her in most categories in the jungle. Um, for support and mid, area users are really strong. I think Sona's doing really well. Karma, I think we're going to see a lot of Karma. Sona isn't quite as good and competitive. She's, uh, she's pretty vulnerable. But that laning phase is still really strong. For a new pick that we're seeing with the press attacks also, uh, Tristana jungle is being played now because she can take, and you're taking precision often as a secondary in jungle and a lot of other roles as well. That one's really strong with Coop and Triumph. We're seeing uh, Tristana jungle right now. Maybe added that to the tier list. A pick that I think is doing fairly well now. For mid lane, a new pick that might be coming into you. Solo queue competitive play is Zillion. Zillion can be really good with that early mid game window. The games are on general shorter. Um, we added some more tabs. We'll get into scaling in a little bit. But I think the games are on average shorter with the lack of resist. And I think Zillion falls along to that and can take advantage of the, the new runes fairly well. It also beats a lot of the, the picks that are mid. Um, the Domination user is also doing well mid. That can use an impact right away, like Katarina is doing really well. Um, we mentioned Kha'Zix for jungle. Some other assassins are doing slightly better. For ADC, we're seeing mostly press attack, I think. Jin is running some sorcery. Double sorcery lanes aren't bad. People are playing some more misfortune with Aerie. Excuse me again. And then we've also added two more tabs because a problem we had with our last tier list is it was mostly addressed towards um, the higher levels. It was assuming um, like max performance pretty much out of the champion. And so the problem with that is uh, my favorite example is LeBlanc because LeBlanc was my first main. LeBlanc's been S tier for a long time. I still think she's S tier. I'm liking the domination tree, but can also run array on her fairly well. I think take advantage of that sudden impact. And so with LeBlanc, there's uh, some factors that go into if a champion's better at lower elo and higher elo. Difficulty is definitely one of them. So LeBlanc is extremely difficult. She's my first main. Um, so when you started back in season two, you you'd start at 1200 MMR, or 1200, yeah, 1200 MMR ELO. And I dropped well below that into bronze uh, with my first main. 
And then when I switched over, my second min was actually still fairly difficult, was Oriana. Um, another difficult champion. But I was also playing more jungle at the time. I was playing a Mumu, something that's on the easier side. And so that helped even out my win ratio. I think I had like 70 with a Mumu, and then probably still probably closer to 50, 55 with Oriana. But that's how I kind of even now. But that was another one of my mains since LeBlanc. There are a bunch of other factors. Um, skirmishing versus team fighting, a single target, and uh, early game pressure. And we'll also move into scaling, scaling since generally, uh, which also goes into that team fighting versus skirmishes. Skirmishes are more prevalent early. And uh, games are on average at lower elo longer than at higher elo. So it's champions who have a good early mid game are more valuable at higher elo and then late game becomes slightly more valuable at lower elo so the blank has a, a weak late game a lot of the top champions that i noticed on this list when i was making it was like a lot of the champions that i see at the top end for solo queue and in challenger solo queue and competitive i go like 3-3-2 have a strong early game and then late game isn't quite as important it's always good some of them are good throughout like mouser is good throughout but yeah, we have uh, the blank three, two, one, and falls off. So this way, you can take a look at the champion. We can look at something. Yeah, take a look at a champion, then see how difficult the champion is. See how they scale. There's some I might still have to update this. There are a few more windows, but now with the game being even shorter, it's hard to print. Uh, include them. For example, we'll talk about Diana. Um, she has this one window in between mid and late game that she becomes fairly weak again before she finishes her last two items. There's this point that she becomes really weak. So I might have to add a little bit more here. I might add some more tabs to make it a little bit easier to find out how the champion will actually do for you at, uh, when you're climbing through solo queue. But I hope this will be helpful and thank you so much for watching.